So my buyers just bought a house and they assumed a 3.75% mortgage with rates up around 7%. This is roughly a 40% savings on what they would have paid in interest if they just went out and got a loan on their own. Now to me, this is absolutely insane. And what's crazier is that this property wasn't even marketed as an assumable loan. Now, given the success that I've had, it's very important to know about the pitfalls before you just jump into one of these deals. There's one pitfall that's really important to avoid, and it can absolutely kill your deal like it did the first time I attempted to do this for a client. So what I want to do today is just share my story with you guys, story of success, and also not to brag, my story of failure. And today I'm going to share with you guys the pitfalls and above all else, how to succeed with the right team on your side. And that is what is very important. So if you go to Redfin or Zillow and you look at Gilbert right now, there are zero, that's right, zero homes being advertised as assumable. But there are in fact a ton of homes with loan assumptions that are actually available. And to get to the site, you do need to register. You can search all the assumable properties, check their balance and even see what the rate is that they're locked into. So this is my personal site. You can access it at the link below. It will ask you to register, but hey, it's totally worth it. Now, how awesome is that? There's really no other site that allows you to uh, log in, look at it and figure out the rates, what's owed on it. It's like panning for gold. So obviously this sounds amazing, but what happened on my first deal? How did that go south? I'm sure all you guys want to know what happened there. So it was an FHA loan and it was actually advertised as assumable by the agent. And we went into it ready to assume. And this being my first assumable loan, I didn't know the proper process. So we had issues dealing with the servicer of the loan along the way. They were almost like an unwilling participant. And I had a few lenders that I had asked for for help, but they were also like an unwilling participant because at the end of the day, they weren't gonna make any money on this deal. And it actually seemed to piss them off when I was doing this. It was like I was going behind their back and cheating on them almost. Sales can be a bit touchy. So there's a contract term that was built in by the agent and after not getting anywhere with the servicer, the seller decided after 30 days that they just wanted to cancel. So we never made it to the closing table, unfortunately. So I studied assumable loans a lot more after this experience and made sure to brush up on all the info I could possibly find. Now I took what I learned and I did this with my second client and it made the process so much smoother. But before we talk about that little difference that I made, it's important to know the exact requirements and sort of the pros and cons for assuming an FHA, USDA, or a VA loan because you don't wanna go around and search for all these homes and then realize that either you don't qualify or it's not gonna be a good fit, right? Now let's start with the FHA and USDA loan assumptions. The process is pretty simple. You need to go through the normal underwriting process, make sure you have a good credit score, and the home must be your primary residence and it can't be an investment property. That's really all of the requirements. So most people will, if they are looking for their primary home, qualify for this. Now let's say you're an investor and you want to assume a loan. Well, you're going to want to look at the VA assumption process, but it does have one important caveat for the seller. Now like an FHA loan, you have to obviously qualify for this, but the home the big difference is that it doesn't have to be a primary residence. Now, the only downside to this is that the seller will not be able to use their VA entitlement again. So if the seller needs to sell this house to purchase another property using their VA entitlement, they will most likely not be open to an assumption. Now, if the seller did go through with the sale, they wouldn't be able to use their entitlement until the loan is paid off, until the buyer refinances, or if the buyer were to sell down the road and move out of that home. And another thing that's a little bit risky for the seller is that if the new buyer defaults on the home loan, it's not gonna affect the seller's credit, but they could lose a portion of their benefits to get another VA loan. So there's some risks that they have to sort of ascertain and figure out if it's gonna be worth it for them to actually let you assume this VA loan. Now, besides these issues, there are some other pitfalls associated with loan assumptions. Many assumptions take a while to close, so you're looking at 45 to 90 days. Is the seller gonna be okay with that? Also, since they aren't being paid on the deal, many lenders aren't gonna give you a helping hand. Given that they won't help you, they don't have much experience with them either. There's also a high denial rate, especially with VA loan assumptions. And there's another huge prerequisite that's required when you're gonna purchase a home with an assumable loan, and this is probably gonna wipe out, I would say, half of your options. So say your home costs 700,000, and it's got a mortgage of $200,000 that you can assume. Well, you'll need to come up with $500,000 cash to make up the difference. You can't get another loan on top of the assumable loan. 
So being that this sounds practically impossible to do, how was I able to get a client into a home with a 3.75% interest rate? Well, I had a client call me who was PCSing to Goodyear, Arizona. He's military, so he had an option to use a VA loan. Now, if a light bulb just went off in your head, that's exactly the same reaction that I had. So we searched this new site for homes, but before we went out and just put in offers, we worked with a specific lender that deals specifically with assumptions to get my client fully pre-approved. And this turned out to be the most critical step, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes. After this, we made an offer on a home after having a discussion with the listing agent, and this is one of the most important elements, especially if you're dealing with an agent and a seller that is unaware or uneducated in how the assumable loan process works. Now you do have to schmooze them a little bit, so we actually agreed to pay $5,000 over the asking price for the home, which was priced very well, by the way, based on comps. So I do think my buyer got a great deal. From here, we got the home closed in just 60 days. It was a win-win for the seller and the buyer. And the most important step, the most important that I learned was to have a lender on our side that was willing to do the dirty work with the servicer along the way because they are not fun to work with. This company I use actually has a 99% success rate closing deals compared to about 88%, which is the industry average. So the one thing I would say that if you're looking to get a really great deal, a really great rate, assume a loan, make sure that you have the team behind you with experience and with success to actually get the deal closed. Now, I'm not going to lie, getting an assumable loan is pretty much like hitting the jackpot, but there are some other ways that you can get under 4% on your mortgage. So go ahead and watch this video right here, and I'll share the other two ways that you can get a mortgage rate under 4% because, hey, you already know one way, right?